Good morning, Malacanang Press Corps. Welcome sa Bangon Marawi Briefing with Assistant Secretary Toby Purisima. Thank you, Rocky. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the Malacanang Press Corps. Good morning. For this edition of the Bangon Marawi Press Briefing, we're joined by Deputy Commander of Joint Task Force Ranao, Colonel Romeo Browner, and Department of Education Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Service Director, Ronil Dako. Of course, we want to open this briefing with good news. More than 90 internally displaced individuals or IDPs from Marawi City have completed the training of the trainers capacity building program under TESDA last week. For further details, let's watch this video. Mahigit siyam na po ng mga individual na displaced o IDPs mula sa Marawi City ang nakumpleto na ang programang pagsasanay ng capacity building ng pagsasanay sa ilalim ng Technical Education and Skills Development Authority o TESDA. Ang mga beneficiaryo ng IDP, mga opisyal ng TESDA, mga kinatawan ng lokal na pamahalaan ng Marawi, mga tauhan ng operasyon ng construction ng FIAT at mga opisyal ng Task Force Bangon Marawi Field Office ay dumalo sa awarding ng mga sertipiko at seremonyal na pamamahagi ng mga toolkit sa Regional Training Center sa Iligan City. Sinabi ni TESDA Provincial Director Tarhata Mapandi na ang programa ay naglalayong magbigay ng sustainable livelihood preparation para sa mga biktima ng Marawi Siege. Tinitiyak ni Mapandi na ang TESDA ay nakatoon na maghatid ng serya ng pagsasanay kahit na sa ibang munisipalidad na malapit sa Marawi City upang magbigay ng buong suporta sa mga IDP at mga industriya ng konstruksyon. Samantala, ayon kay Abdul Jalil Manguranda, isang recipient ng training na ang programa ay kapaki-pakinabang sa pagbawi ng mga residente ng Marawi sa mga tuntunin ng paghahanda para sa mga aktibidad sa kabuhayan sa kanilang komunidad. Ito po ay uh, isa rin uh, mal malaking may tutulong sa mga taga Marawi, lalo na po sa buong uh, lalawigan ng uh, Lanao del Sur. Pag na nagkaroon po ng katuparan yung tinatawag nilang mga training courts na gagawin sa lahat ng municipality ng uh, Lanao del Sur para po matuto o mabigyan ng uh, uh, sapat na trainings yung mga uh, 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 tao natin doon para po sa uh, mabilisang pagbangon ng uh, Marawi at saka uh, Lanao del Sur. Tinitiyak ng TESDA sa mga beneficiaryo na ang ahensya ay nakatuon upang suportahan ang mabilis na rehabilitasyon ng lungsod. Para sa bayan, Sweet Lukman, Philippine Information Agency. On the topic of livelihood, 43 soldiers who were wounded in action during the Marawi City Siege officially signed individual investment agreements amounting to 2.596 million pesos with the Department of Industry, Trade and Industry Small Business Corporation last February 13 at the AFP Medical Center. The P3 Equity Investment for Kia, Wia, Marawi soldiers and families is under President Rodrigo Roa Duterte's Pondo sa Pagbabago at Pag-Asenso. It will provide a maximum investment of 100,000 per soldier to finance startup ventures or the expansion of existing businesses of the soldiers and their families. Among those present during the activity were DTI Secretary Ramon Lopez, SBC President and CEO Maria Luna Cacanando, DTI USEC Zenaida Maglaya, DTI ASEC Amina Fajardo, and ASEC Antonio Bautista who represented Department of National Defense Secretary Delphine Lorenzana. On the topic of livelihood, 1,500 Marawi residents joined the Negocio Seminar Para Sa Marawi, entrepreneurial training conducted by the DTI at the Mindanao State University Iligan Institute of Technology, Gymnasium, Iligan City. The seminar aims to develop livelihood opportunities and improve the recovery of the conflict-affected individuals. It also provides information regarding proposed loan agreements. The program aims to stabilize and fast-track socioeconomic development of the communities devastated by the deadly combat and regain the self-esteem of the residents. On the subject of peace building, 
civil society organizations conducted a solidarity walk for peace in Marawi City last February 19 at Buklod Park, MSU Marawi. It served as a gesture of their sympathy to the plight of the communities affected by the conflict. The event was led by MSU, the Consortium of Bangsamoro Civil Society, Institute of Peace and Development in Mindanao, and the United Nations Development Program. In collaboration with Heavenly Culture, World Peace Restoration of Light. Moreover, an art exhibition entitled Bagong Taon, Bagong Pag-asa para sa Bagong Marawi, was opened at A-Space Makati on Gen and which will be held from January 28 to February 2. The exhibit is a collaboration between 25 artists showcasing different paintings for sale with the proceeds dedicated for Marawi. To further raise awareness on our efforts for Marawi City, the Task Force Bangon Marawi Information Management and Strategic Communication Support Group, in cooperation with the DTI, put up a Bangon Marawi booth at the recently concluded National Information Convention at the SMX Convention Center in Davao City. The event was attended by more than 1,600 information officers across the nation. We sold a variety of Maranao products with all proceeds going to our IDPs. We also had an exhibit of photos featuring the citizens of Marawi City, as well as a wall for people to post their messages for our Maranao brothers and sisters. Regarding the post-conflict needs assessment, the results of the post-conflict needs assessment conducted in Marawi City and other affected localities has been completed. It can be recalled that the assessment was conducted from August to December 2017 and covered various sectors, namely infrastructure, productive, social, and cross-sectoral sectors. Based on the assessment results, the total damages amount to approximately 11.5 billion pesos. Losses amount to more or less 6.7 billion pesos and the total needs for the recovery and rehabilitation of Marawi City cost approximately 51.6 billion pesos. These amounts cover Marawi City and other affected areas in the municipalities of Butig and Piagapo in Lanao del Sur. The PCNA will also be the basis for the development and the implementation of the Bangon Marawi Comprehensive Rehab Recovery and Rehabilitation Program or BMCRRP. Meanwhile, during the hearing of the Committee on Finance of the Regional Legislative Assembly of ARMM held in Cotabato City on February 13, the implementation of the programs, projects, and activities or PCA, PPAs in the Bangon Marawi CRRP was presented by NEDA. The implementation program for the PPAs in the Bangon Marawi Comprehensive Rehabilitation and Recovery Program was approved at the committee level by the Committee on Finance of the Regional Legislative Assembly and will be discussed during the next plenary session of the Regional Legislative Assembly in March. That is all I have uh, for you today. Um, we are now open for questions and of course you can also ask Colonel Broner and uh, Director Ko. MPC questions? Alvin Baltazar, you have questions. Alvin, microphone, please. Sir, sir Colonel Bronner, sana. Sir, mm -hmm. magandang waga. Sir, um, kamusta yung implementation ng martial law? Sa, sa assessment niyo po ba, tatapusin yung buong 2018 o may chance na hindi matapos yung 2018, ililift na yung martial law? Uh, Doon sa first question mo, uh, very effective ang martial law, especially in the uh, areas of Marawi City and Lanao del Sur, no? including uh, Lanao del Norte. Uh, for one, wala na tayong nakikita ang mga nagdadala ng firearms openly. No? And uh, when, since the implementation of martial law, halos wala na pong cases of uh, murder, homicide, no? or other killings within Marawi City and Lanao del Sur. Um, of course, uh, that is uh, not including the Rido, no? hindi kasama yon. But yung uh, mga crimes uh, related to uh, the loss of lives, 
from uh, firearms, no illegal firearms, ay nawala na ito because of our control, our gun control that we are implementing and uh, we are we are able to implement this because of martial law. No? Uh, pangalawa, yung pong control natin ng entry of individuals into the uh, barangays in Marawi City, we are able to control or monitor at least ano, yung mga tao na pumapasok so that uh, this way we will prevent the entry of people who are not really from Marawi City or people who are suspected to be members of the terrorist groups. Uh, dun po sa pangalawang tanong ninyo, uh, ang masasabi ko lang doon is that uh, martial law is very effective. No? Uh, and then, uh, but as to the, uh, maybe the uh, validity of that martial law, wala po sa aming level yon. So I'm afraid I will not be able to answer that portion. Questions? Sir, sir follow up na lang. Sir, pero kung magkakaroon kayo ng recommendation, Ano yung i-recommend niyo, sir? Well, kung manggagaling po sa amin yung recommendation, definitely we will recommend that uh, we continue to implement martial law until the end of the year. Questions? Um, Catherine Valente? Thank okay, Colonel Broner po. Sir, last Tuesday, uh, may statement po si MILF Chief Murad is warning po that she had is loyal to the Islamic State group flash with looted guns and cash could siege I could seize another city in the country. Sabi niya po, the chances of having another Marawi siege cannot be overruled. So what's the military's position on this? Well, uh, of course, uh, from our experience from the uh, Marawi siege, we are pre preparing for uh, another urban warfare. No, In the eventuality that something similar to Marawi city happens, we should be ready. So, from the lessons that we learned, we are now rewriting our doctrines. We are now um, reorganizing our units. We are re-equipping and retraining. Um, so, from the side of the armed forces, handa po kami for another Marawi siege. No? Whether it happens in Marawi or elsewhere. Kaya nga po, uh, naikiusap rin kami sa mga iba't ibang mga grupo uh, to help us in uh, our advocacy to counter violent extremism and radicalism. And of course, we are banking on the MILF to help us with this. No? Uh, sabi naman po nila that uh, they do not believe in, the, in violent extremism so, sana po ay uh, maging katulong namin sila uh, dito sa kampanya or sa ad advocacy natin against violent extremism, terrorism, and uh, radicalism. Okay, Sheila Ferias. To Colonel Browner pa rin po. Sir, given nyo sa sinabi nyo, meron ba kayo na monitor na activities ng mga terrorists ngayon na possible na maging Marawi, Marawi um, situation natin? I can give you an update on uh, what's happening in Marawi City and uh, Lanao del Sur. As far as Marawi City is concerned, it is uh, relatively safe no, and secured. Pero po dito sa labas ng Marawi City, uh, especially around uh, Lanao Lake, since January, we have had three encounters already. No, if you recall, we had an encounter last uh, June 20 in the uh, municipality of Masyo. And then the following day, in the uh, municipality of Pagayawan, the next day, our forces were able to uh, apprehend three members of the Maute ISIS. No? And then recently, February 8, there was an, another encounter in uh, the municipality of Pantar in Lanao del Sur. All of this against uh, uh, believed members of uh, the Maute ISIS. So, naniniwala tayo na may mga remnants pa rin na gumagalaw dyan. And uh, right now, they're trying to recruit more members. But sir, um, yung forces ba nila enough to na makagawa ulit ng another Marawi? Well, uh, sa ngayon, hindi pa nila kayang gumawa. Ang assessment po namin ano, on the ground is that hindi pa nila kayang gumawa ng uh, 
ng isang pag-atake katulad ng ginawa nila sa Marawi City. MPC questions? Ina Andolong? Microphone please, Laila. For ASEC Toby, sir, you mentioned yung 51.6 billion pesos na needs for recovery. Do we already have a um, enough funding to cover this amount? Because I believe medyo smaller yung estimates na binibigay dati. So we're, we have funding. Um, our funding sources are from the National Disaster Risk Reduction Management Fund, which is in the General Appropriations Act. That is 10 billion for this year. Now, itong 51 billion naman na to, hindi lang ito this year, no? These are short-term PPAs that would cover not only this year but in the coming years. So multiple year yung ating funding sources para dito. And we're exploring other uh, funding sources like together with our uh, development partners, together with the private sector. Meron ding uh, allocation dyan ang regional government ng ARMM at ang city uh, government of Marawi. So combination niya ng funding, yung pagkukuha na niyang 51 billion. How much of the that amount, sir, will be, kumbaga, yung for this year? Will it just be the 10 billion for this year? Well, from the uh, on the part of the budget, yes. Um, subject to augmentation. Of course, whenever we, uh, we determine that we can already proceed with certain projects, we will request for augmentation in terms of the NDRM fund, no? To, to cover uh, additional projects for the year. And the timeline, sir, is until what year? Well, we have short-term PPAs, no, which cover this year or perhaps until 2019. No? But definitely, we have projects until 2022. And these are all being planned, and these are all going to be part of the Comprehensive Rehabilitation and Recovery Program, or the CRRP of Marawi, which we expect uh, to be released uh, by the end of the first quarter or in, or in March. Foreign aid, sir, are we also considering... Um Kasama yan sa discussion, again, the resource mobilization, the finance and resource mobilization sub, uh, subcommittee or support group of the task force, they're still discussing this. Dahil maraming nag express ng, ng tulong, no? And we're, we're discussing this, and it's the dovetail natin ito sa available resources at sa ating PPAs. Lastly, sir, are we still on track doon sa target to begin actual construction in Ground Zero by uh, mid-April? Yes, um, our target is still um, mid-April to early May no, for the groundbreaking for the MAA, no? ito yung development of the most affected area. And the process is, the, the selection process uh, to choose the developers is ongoing. Uh, Ilan yung bidder, sir? Tapos na ba yung bidding pag sabit nung ongoing o, o, kasi ongoing Swiss challenge process yan eh. so it's a very it's 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 a long process it's a complex process where there will be unsolicited proposals and these proposals would have to be evaluated and eventually these proposals would have to be challenged yun yung tinatawag yes. nating Swiss challenge so this is a very uh, tedious process but the task force is doing it there's a technical working group established uh, under the task force and there's also a selection committee that will uh, finally recommend the developer that, that will uh, undertake the development of the most affected area. Thank you, sir. Okay, question, MPC? Uh, Rosalie Coas. Hi, sir. Um, regarding po sa mga reports na nag-stop na raw po ng pagbibigay ng relief goods sa mga nasa evacuation centers, pwede po ba nating ipakiulat kung ano po yung katotohanan sa mga reports na yun? We haven't received any reports na natigil na. No? Perhaps this is just uh, a logistics issue na sa distribution process. Pero tuloy-tuloy ang ating pagbibigay ng tulong, pagbibigay ng relief sa ating mga IDPs. Again, we're not ending the relief phase no? or the early recovery phase of this conflict. No? Uh, patuloy ang ating pagbibigay ng relief sa kanila. I know that for a fact. So if there are if there are issues na hindi na re receive on time or baka kulang na re receive we will check on that and thank you for raising that. But uh, it may just be a distribution issue. Again, um, as I've said ever since, this is a continuing effort. At kung merong mga improvements na kailangan gawin, gagawin natin ito para sa ating mga IDPs. Pwede pong malaman kung ilan pa po yung nasa evacuation centers. And dun sa 10 billion budget for this year, magkano po yung nakalaan para sa relief assistance? Yung, yung sa relief assistance, this will be coming from agency budgets. No? 
um, mostly uh, meron budget sa ating mga line agencies para ipagpatuloy ang uh, relief efforts. I don't have the exact figures as to the number of IDPs but we have 67 evacuation centers still um, up. No? And um, in these 67 evacuation centers, no, I just like to report that actually the chairman of the task force Bangun Marawi, uh, Secretary Eduardo Del Rosario, he's been in Marawi since yesterday, uh, since Wednesday. No, hanggang ngayon, nandun pa rin siya sa Marawi in Iligan dahil nagko-consultation sila sa mga leaders ng uh, IDPs sa mga evacuation centers at full naman ang suporta nila at naipaparating naman sa ating uh, leadership ng task force no, ang, kan ang kanilang mga pangangailangan. So I'm sure makakarating din yung uh, issue na ni Race ngayon at uh, definitely ipaparating ko yan personally sa ating uh, task force leadership. Catherine? Sir Toby po. Sir, regarding sa temporary shelters, sabi po kasi ng NHA, ang target nila is by March makukompleto na. May we know po kung ilang percent na yung natapos as of March? Of uh, actually, as, as of March, ang target this March ay uh, 1,100 transitional shelters. Yun yung total target dun sa barangay sa Gonsongan. No? At uh, yun yung na-inaugurate na at pagpatuloy yung uh, paggawa ng transitional shelters dun. No? Meron nang na-identify na site 2, no? a second site for the transitional shelters which is uh, approximately 200, uh, 200, uh, 2 kilometers sorry, 2 kilometers away from the most affected area. Ma meron lang mga inaayos na detalye regarding sa paggamit ng lupa but this is, uh, the second site is a 15 hectare area site and could accommodate 1,300 additional transitional shelters. Questions? Sir, if I may. Uh, Colonel Browner. Yeah. Sure. Um, sir, with your permission, I have some figures po that I got from uh, Task Force Bangun Marawi before coming over. Um, so the number of uh, IDP families remaining in uh, evacuation centers is 60,892. And then the number of transition, transitional sh shelters that have been completed is 850. 60,000 families, sir? Uh, yes, ma'am. More than 60,000. Families, as of February 7. Okay. And please, a question? Okay, Colonel Browner, sir, paano nyo ika-counter naman yung mga uh, misinformation? Kasi nung panahon ng Marawi Siege, ang dami ganyan. Tsaka yun yung ginagamit pag-recruit. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Thank you for asking that question. Uh, sa ngayon po, I... Uh, the people of uh, Marawi City and Lanao del Sur are clamoring for more information. They want to know uh, what's the, they want to know basically what uh, the plan is for uh, in the uh, rehabilitation and recovery of Marawi City. So uh, what we really need to do is to give them the right kind of information. Uh, kaya nga po, uh, itong forum natin is very helpful. But uh, we, we also need to have uh, this kind of uh, forum in, in Marawi City or uh, Iligan City. Mm -hmm. So we are moving towards that. And also, uh, by the way, uh, the, the uh, Task Force Bangun Marawi and uh, PIA will be launching a radio program this week in uh, Iligan City uh, and Marawi City. Uh, this is aimed at giving the right kind of information so that we will be able to counter the fake news and the misinformation that is happening on the ground. Okay, thank you. Sheila? Microphone, Kat? Colonel, um, quick lang po. Um, yung groundbreaking sa April, uh, I understand, dependent dun sa pag-clear nyo sa main battle area. How many percent na po yung cleared as of now? Ang estimate po ng ating engineers is that uh, about 60% of the area has been cleared already. Uh, however, dun po sa number of bombs uh, that we have so far uh, cleared is only 14 out of 70. No? 70 po yung number of bombs that were dropped by our aircraft that did not explode. So hinahanap pa natin ito. So far, we have found 14 and we were able to dispose of them. No? Uh, However, 
yung pong area na 60% na sinasabi namin is the area covered by our uh, EODs, no? yung mga explosive ordnance disposal teams natin. So we are working doubly hard to make sure that we we meet that deadline. Para bago mag, mag groundbreaking, we will be able to allow the developers to come in because the area has been cleared already. We have been requesting for some equipment so that we will be able to do the, the work faster. No? Okay. Um, we have an uh, director call of uh, DepEd will provide us an update on the status of our learners in the area. Yeah. Just to add to the question um, with respect to Sagon Songan, I'd like to inform the, the public that DepEd actually is also ready for the construction of what uh, we call the temporary learning spaces. We have um, 